everyone, welcome to this episode. In today's hand history, I am playing the win $600 buy-in, 250k guaranteed. It is part of their spring championship series. While only had a 250k guaranteed, ended up getting over 800 entries with 75k up top. So a wonderful value tournament as always at the win. It was of course very soft, which is to be expected. Um, so in this hand history, it is big blind 1.5k. And I have 60k in chips, and I am dealt the king of spades and the jack of hearts under the gun at a full nine-handed table. So, if we look up my range here for 40 bigs in early position. Um, this is under the gun eight-handed, we are under the gun nine-handed, but this range here isn't too far off of the range that I'd normally be opening at say, you know, if there was a couple other pros or even three or four other pros, I'm probably going to be opening pretty close to here, getting a little out of line um, for true under the gun. But on this table draw, I think I had one other pro at the table only. So my opening range is going to look more like, say if I was a couple spots further to the left, maybe something like this. Right around here is pretty good ballpark. So pretty close to 25% of hands is probably going to be my actual opening range. Um, I think the only changes I might make to this is I might not open these in full, and I would probably open the 7, 6, 6, 5 in full, and I might open these as well. But I'm going to be right around this 23 to 25% of hands. Now the reason why I'm opening so much looser than GTO here is for one generally main reason, and that is because my opponents are not 3-betting me anywhere near loose enough. So I get to open much looser because if they are calling too frequently and just letting me, or just playing too tight in general, and just letting me see way too many flops, then those are profitable situations that I get to be put into that I normally should not be. So I open this King Jack off to 3K at big blind 1500. Under the gun one calls and button calls and the blinds fold. So normally when an under the gun one call happens, I expect their range to be very, very tight. So if we look at this here, this is a pretty good ballpark of what uh, their range should in general kind of look like. But this opponent two orbits before called me in the exact same situation with three, four offsuit. So uh, yeah, this range isn't a good idea as what they're calling with. So I expect them to actually have a very, very, very very loose range maybe something along the lines like say i mean honestly this is probably a better ballpark for the range um yeah so it probably looks more something like this depending on how spicy they are feeling um the button is also a very loose fun player um he's also made some pretty speculative overcalls his were a little bit more reasonable, like he overcalled like seven eight offsuit on the button um but he also has a fairly loose range so we're going to the flop three ways and the pot size is 13k and the flop is the queen of spades the nine of hearts and the six of diamonds while i am three ways i do think that this is a pretty easy continuation bet spot um, if we just look at this spot heads up i'm supposed to be c betting here uh, looks like about two-thirds of the time and checking about a third of the time um, if we look at my checks i do have some check traps um, but a lot of my checks are like these small to mid pairs, which I certainly don't mind checking. Honestly, the, the main way that I'm going to adjust my approach here is for as most recreational players and most players in general, it's going to be way better to just bet all of your hands with these in equity and checking only your absolute best traps and then your low equity hands that you can't bet. So if we look at King Jack here, it, it does play well as either a check, a small bet, or a medium bet um, i thought in game that it would probably be ideal for me to bet medium so i bet uh 6k into 13k but i'm also honestly completely okay with betting small here um, i don't think it matters too much now the reason why i chose specifically betting about half pot which i knew would be technically on the small side if we look at theory is i wanted to bet large enough to generate extra folds without having to risk too much um so honestly any i think betting any amount between like 9k and 14k here would be completely and totally fine i decided to go with 6k we're going to say that i bet two-thirds here 
my uh, my early position opponent folded and the button called. So pot size on the turn is 25k, and the turn is the ace of So something to note about this situation, um, probably could have brought it up before as well, is since Button's calling range preflop is so loose, the range in which they continue with on the flop is going to be fairly loose, and the range in which they get to this turn card is going to be a lot looser than what you would normally expect. Um, so if we, uh, if we had looked back at their calling range, I would have added a decent number of extra hands. So on this turn A's, it is a card where a lot of the range really dislikes it, but even more so in this specific situation because of how loose their preflop and flop ranges are going to be. So if we look here, this is a really good bet spot, but it's an even better bet spot than what theory shows. So while I certainly was very happy to bet here, I am very, very, very happy to bet here in the real situation as well as theory. Um, I think this is just a very clear bet. Um, I bet fairly large as well. Again, I didn't quite go two-thirds pot. I went half again for the exact same reason as I did before, which is I knew I wanted to go somewhat large, but also wanted to um, keep the stack to pot ratio a little deeper so I could triple barrel and shove um, and get a little bit of extra fold equity. Also, I didn't think I would need to upsize to gain extra fold equity. I think the parts of the range that are going to fold are probably going to fold either way, whether I bet you know 11K versus if I bet, say, 18K. So whether I went about half pot or went two thirds, I think the range that folds is going to be pretty similar. So I'm gonna save those extra chips. And saving those extra chips over and over and over and over, that's where you save a lot of money and that's how you make a lot of money in against these recreational players by saving money on your bluffs and upsizing your value bets. It is very simple and very, very profitable. So I bet a, I bet 12K into a pot size of 25K. So clicking the medium size bet here. Let's look at what their calling range actually looks like. So, well, I don't think they have ace king ever. Um, I don't think they have ace queen they probably raise flop with ace queen pretty close to always they could have king queen here that would not surprise me um they could have king jack for sure queen jack for sure queens they probably three but pre jacks and tens i do expect them to have i don't know if they would fold these on the turn though um i don't actually think they would for sure um i could see them calling again so I don't think I actually have this fold equity versus them, at least here. Um, I think these are hands I'm probably gonna have to triple barrel off, which I was planning on tripling. Um, turn, uh, I also expect them on the turn to maybe call these nine X, but these I could see going either way. Uh, queen nine, they just never have. They're gonna raise flop with that. Um, these ace highs, I don't see them floating flop with these, but maybe they do. I could see that going either way. Now, they certainly have hands like any of these straight draws. Uh, king Jack, they have. King 10, they have. I think they have both of these in full, too. I don't think they're folding these ever, really. I think they have King Jack in full. I also think they have King 10 off in full. I think they have Jack 10 off in full. Obviously, they have Jack 10 suited in full. Um, I also think that they could have like a 10 7. They could have. Uh, Maybe this jack eight they don't have, but yeah, they definitely have a decent number of extra hands in here as calls as well. So my fold equity is probably a little bit less here than what theory shows, but on top of that, they're also getting the river which with a much weaker range. So there are definitely going to be a lot of rivers that I want to triple barrel on. It's really important that I do so. However, the river was the ace of spades. This river is a very bad river for me to bluff on. Um, if you actually look at all the hands that I would want to bluff with, like this King Jack, I'm supposed to be checking it. King 10, I'm supposed to be checking it. Uh, Jack 10, I do get to bluff because I'm so far down in my range. 10-8, uh, even 10-8, I don't really get to bluff it very often. Um, King 10, King Jack. Look, look at all these bluffs that just are pure give ups. Um, it looks like I'm not really bluffing here at all, really. Very, 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 very little. Um, yeah, very little. 
Um, something else that's always important to note in these types of spots, if you notice, bricked flush draws are almost always just really bad bluffs. You don't want to have hearts in your hand because you want your opponents to be able to have those cards. So you, when you bet, they're more likely to have those and fold. So yeah, this is just a card that I give up on a lot. Um, and usually that just means I lose this pot a decent amount of the time. Because I check, they check back, I lose. I check, they bet. I'm supposed to generally lose. So I checked. They put me all in. Um, so I'm getting about uh, 2.25 to 1, right around there. So I only need to win 1 divided by 3.25. I only need to win about 30% of the time, right around there. 31% of the time. In game, well, in theory world, uh, I'm getting way better odds, but in real world, I'm not getting that great of odds. So they put me all in. And the moment he puts me all in, um, I'm just thinking back to the types of hands I've seen him play. Um, this player had been largely loose passive. I didn't really see that much aggression from them. Um, the few spots that you know I did see aggression, they largely just had it. However, 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 uh, you know, sometimes you just look at a guy and go, yeah, you're bluffing. Um, but on top of that, there are also a decent number of live tails that you can be paying attention to as well. Um, one of the main ones that I really enjoy a lot, uh, it is the pulse tell. Um, it's paying attention to someone's pulse and based off of how it changes or not over the course of, of, of a hand, use that information to pick off a call uh, to find a bluff. The other reason why I did not want to fold here is because if I think about what his range actually gets to this river uh, looks like, look at how many straight draws he has at brick. So he has, so we tied a we tie versus King Jack, but we beat King 10, we beat Jack 10, we beat 7 8, we beat Jack 8, we beat 10 8, we beat 10 7 suited. Um, obviously, 10 8, I would only expect to be suited really two. Jack 8 suited as well. Um, we might beat some spicy low hearts that he decided to peel us with, or King high hearts like King 8 of hearts, hands like that. But largely, the main hands I expect to beat are King 10. Jack 10 and 7 8, which uh, for the combos that we beat, there's three kings left and four tens left. So there's 12 king 10 combos, uh, 12 jack 10 combos, and 16 7 8 combos. So that's 40 combos of bluffs right there that I beat. Um, then we can include some 10 8s, jack 8 suiteds, 10 7 suiteds for another call it 10 combos. That's 50 combos that I beat for sure um combos that i lose to though uh queen jack queen 10 king queen um a6 ace nine uh pocket sixes and nines probably raise flop queen nine probably raises flop he might not jam queen 10 he definitely is going to jam queen jack and king queen so that would be uh nine and nine combos 18 a6, ace 9, that's probably another uh, 18 combos. Um, even if you, so here's the thing, even if you give them a lot of ace high floats on flop, like a lot of reasonable looking ones like ace 8, ace 10, ace jack type hands, if you give them like even queen 10 plus, um, queen, we'll even say maybe he jams queen 8 even, uh, queen 8 suited. Um, so we'll say that he has like queen 8 suited here too. Uh, it's very hard to get over 100 combos. Like, you have to really, 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 really look for to get anywhere near 100 combos. Now, the difficult part with this is just because they have hands in their range that you can be doesn't mean they're going to be firing those as bluffs. So then that's where some of the other difficulty is, is maybe, say, this player gets to the river with, like, say, 70 possible bluff combos, but maybe he only bluffs them half the time. And then he gets to the river with, say, 80 possible value combos, but he's jamming those always. So that's where a lot of this difficulty comes down to, where even if you think on the river they can have the proper types of hands to find those bluffs with, they might not necessarily be bluffing them anywhere near often enough for this to be a call. So while on the river I was pretty confident 
and the range would have more than enough bluffs in it and i actually should have a fairly quote unquote easy bluff catch i still took the time to make sure that i could get a live read as well so i had their range being very loose on the river them having a lot of opportunities to find bluffs with a lot of different combos so even though it was uh, essentially a pot size jam for my tournament life and i only had king high and it was after late registration was closed i still thought that i had a fairly easy call and i called and i beat 10 8 offsuit your soul is mine so this hand for me is all about doing my absolute best to keep in my mind the types of hands that this opponent gets to the river with. I know that this is pretty much always what poker is about, but in this specific situation, you know, if, if you're not really, really on top of it, then this king jack is a very easy check fold. And you wouldn't necessarily look back and go, oh, hey, you know, I was supposed to, you know, call off this hand. But... Because I was doing my absolute best to pay attention to what their range looked like, what hands I actually beat, and using that to figure out based off the pot odds that I was getting, not only is this hand in game a very, very easy and very profitable call, it actually is a theory call, which I, I, I had no idea that this was a theory call. It's actually pretty crazy that theory I get to call here as well. So yeah, pay attention. Keep in mind, you know, what types of hands your opponents are going to have in situations and hands that you think are auto folds can turn into very, very, very profitable spots for you. That being said, thank you much for watching. Stay safe and healthy out there. Best of luck at the tables. See ya.